Greetings. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk with Patricia. And I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Patricia Ficklin. And our guest today is Apostle Mary Turner. We're going to have a great show. And thank you for spending your time with us today. Greetings, Apostle Turner. How are you doing today? I am doing great in the name of Jesus, first and foremost. Awesome. But all is well. And thank you again for inviting me to be the first of your great hosting show. <laughs> Let's talk. I know God has a plan in place and we're just going to follow the plan. Yes, we are. Yes. Today we're going to we're going to be doing a multi-series on various topics, but I wanted to start out with women in ministry because there's been so much talk lately about women shouldn't be pastors and uh, every different things and in leadership. Absolutely. And I said, what better way to start than with Apostle Ooh, Turner oh my who God. has all these accolades to go with her Ooh. and how you have uh, brought other women along this journey. Oh my God. That's a powerful <laughs> loaded question. <laughs> First of all. So truly honored just to be called God's, one of his chosen, uh, an apostle. And to say the first thing about women in ministry, that's a loaded question again. Mm -hmm. Because we've not always been accepted yes. in positions as offices such as the men. Because we have not been so accepted, it's been a fight, it's been sort of a journey. We've even had to go through little things such as when you're invited to speak way back when, thank mm -hmm. God, times has changed. Right. When we're invited to come forward, you can stand to the side or you can sit over here, but not to the platform. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, they weren't recognizing even apostles, let alone pastors. Okay. So that has been one challenge for myself. And I'm going to speak for me right mm -hmm. now because that's what you call me to do. Yes. But that journey of a pastoral role, uh, evangelist role, and even to the apostles role has been very good mm -hmm. in one sense. I say that because it put upon us an anointing of boldness to know who we are in Christ, to know that we would not be sidestepped or put down. Uh, of course, I took some back seats myself because I did not want to make any problems to the ministry front. Mm -hmm. So these type things we had to give to God. And as we went on and time went on, God began to change the heart of men. Put okay. God Almighty. And he already had kings in place for women that were coming along. Okay. And to say we had to really go back to the word of God and understand, did you really call us God to be in these positions? Mm -hmm. And the first thing you go back to is the beginning of Moses. When you had all these women that was coming along, the Esthers, and you just had to understand. And I was telling someone, I said, you know, I read the word of God so much so that we think we just about have it. And we're nowhere near mm -hmm. getting what God has for all of us. And the fact is that even with Esther, you know her, she had a prominent lead in the mm -hmm. word and she had a prominent lead back then in the Old Testament as well as a lot more. 
But we sometimes become intimidated as women if we're not strong in the Lord or in our own selves. Okay. So I guess with that being said, without overbarring and killing the question, it's been a challenge. Mm-hmm. But over years, God had people in place for us, okay. helping to pull us along, men particularly. Mm-hmm other women that have went through the battles. But for every battle we had to go through, Dr. Picklin, it was already set up for us. Mm-hmm. And all we had to do was just go through it. Amen. 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 Now you've been in the ministry how long? We're gonna walk through your well, journey. Hallelujah. I just don't want it to be about me, but if that but, so but, be. So be I want you to I want it to be about you because you created a pathway for other women to follow into. So we have to talk about your journey as to how you maneuvered, how you were inspired in order to create these avenues. Because we did not do your full introduction, but in order for people to really get and to understand the journey Wow. We have to and go back. Go back. And that's and, a good and walk up. That's right. That's to right. where we are today. Well, thank you. And I honor you for that as well. But the first thing I would have to say is I do come from a large family, a family of nine. And we come from a little country below Athens, Georgia. Okay. I've always been a church girl, more so than any of my other sisters and brothers. And they've all known that. There go that church girl. <laughs> And I say that because there was something different that God had put in my heart and I already knew, beginning even with the early stage of my life, when I say a country person, there were elders around us living in the community. And one thing that I would never lay my head down to rest, Dr. Fickley, was the fact that I always made sure every elder in that community was taken care of, that they had water prepared for them, they had food and whatever they needed. So much so that my mother knew. Mm-hmm. And when the kids, my sisters would say, Mary's not home yet, Mom. She said, I'm not worried. She ain't coming home just she made sure every grown person around here is taken care of. That was my heart. I did not mm-hmm. know God was beginning to deal with me okay. then. And so in church, I was shy. I still am shy, believe it or not. <laughs> but in church, I had some elder women. Thank God. That's why I said earlier to you, be mindful and appreciative of those who have helped you to come along and push you. Mm-hmm. And maybe they did not understand, but my aunt, I had an aunt who was an elder as well. And she was always the one who would say, are you okay? She would always call me when I wasn't even aware of things. She would always say, you was in a place you shouldn't have been. Even at two in the morning, she would always call, but she was assigned to me. I did mm-hmm. not know it till later. Okay. And so coming from that state of young, I moved into a place of, uh, we want to say evangelist back then, but to me, it was just talking the word of God, not having a full understanding. Everywhere I went, people would say, here come that little preaching girl. That was all God doing, though. Mm -hmm. And so as I went on into my evangelist role, eventually I got married. And my husband was not in church. And therefore, I had to fight another battle. Mm-hmm. Now, I say fight. It's not fighting against him, of mm-hmm. course. And that didn't, we had two children from that. So after all of that and walked into God's purpose, now I'm beginning to understand by the year of 1990, I've done all of this behind me for preparation. And this is so critical for young people. Mm-hmm. Be very mindful of whom you are in company with. Because everybody really doesn't mean well for us. We know that. And so as I went on into that area of my life from 1990 up until about 2020, I was uh, under leadership of several pastors and following the words of God and understanding the teachings of God. And so as I went on, I realized that I was moving in a different direction than what I came out of, which was Baptist. Okay. And as I became an evangelist, I had remarried because we had gone through a first time, things didn't work out. So Mm -hmm. now I'm married to another man of God, and he is a man of God. My husband is Mr. Mm -hmm. Anthony Turner. And we were in church, and he was a deacon, and I was under this pastor, and the church didn't want the pastor no more. They wanted us, they wanted me, and blah, blah, blah. 
naive, mm. accepted it. It was God doing. We took that job in that church, and the Lord gave my husband a new vision name for the church. Mm. That's when it really all started opening up. And I was pastoring at that time, Living Water of Christ Church, still there, pastoring. And then at that point in time, as we were going on, Dr., I realized that people did not have an understanding of the teaching because of the older generation at that time. And God began to speak to me. My mother at that time had gotten sick and I, my sick sister and I were rotating the shift to stay with her. But in that home, I had made me a place of refuge. Mm -hmm. And in that place, God spoke. He says, daughter, wake up. And I was sharing this just recently, how now I understand how everything came into play without my knowledge until now recently. Mm -hmm. And this is really coincidental that you would even ask me to speak. Thank you. But even that, when he called my name that night, he says, daughter, wake up. And what do you see? I see nothing. Daughter, wake up, and what do you see? So I get up out of the bed, I go to my place where I call my refuge place, where I set all of my studying time. And he says, open the Bible. I open my Bible, and it's, he says, now what do you see? Dr. Ficklin, the Bible flipped open to Jeremiah 1. And mm. you already know what Jeremiah 1 says. He says, what do you see? And I broke down and started crying, he said. You're going to change your church from Baptist to fivefold ministries. All right. That, now, a woman, I'm telling you, this is strong. I said, but Lord, we have no apostle. His answer was, you are my apostle. Mm. And immediately after all of that, I must have cried for cried and cried and cried. And then I met the apostle, David Harrison, who actually brought me under the apostolic and taught me very well. Mm -hmm. So I give God and glory and praise for that. And then time went on and I began to see others end up walking with others in that field. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, now I'm working at Emory University, full time job. My plate is now full. And I would always say, now what, God? Now he says, open the chaplain at the Emory University, a woman again, because I'm always going to be challenged. And I knew that. But God said, I chose you. Praise God, I said. But I never wanted to take on a prideful attitude. But people were like, oh, but you this, you're this, you so this, this, this. And I couldn't pull back. Mm -hmm. In Emory University at that chapel place, I set up a Bible study. People were coming to be prayed over. And I did that for five years, okay. one hour every Wednesday. And my boss had favor with me. He says, what else do you need to make this happen? So God's favor was on my life. Mm. And I began to realize I'm walking in the right lane now. And then I got a day that's the apostle now. A woman again, I'm thinking, thank God for the strong men who knew themselves enough to pull the women along. Okay. I praise these guys and men of God that do not take it like lesser or an attitude or not prideful, if that's mm -hmm. right. I don't want to be prideful. I don't want to be prideful because we know what pride does. But nevertheless, all of that has taken place now. Now the women, God spoke again. You are a woman of Zion and a woman to many as a mother. Now I struggle with that. And you asked the question later on, which I really <laughs> had to challenge Mary Turner on. And I struggle with that, but God, I'm in my latter days now. But God, when people would call me and say, but you don't know, you made an impact in my life. Mm -hmm. That's to God's glory. And so now I'm being attacked again in the field of moving forward. And I'm going to not jump ahead of that last question because I've got to answer it, but I don't want to give out a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. I want to answer straight and be as honest as I can. Women of God and women who are on the horizon, it truly is your time. Be very mindful that every person that was born in this earth is already ordained by God in heaven before we were born. We know what the story teaches us. So I want to encourage you all. Grab hold. Run like never before because there's so much out there for you. 
Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Then you said something that you, when you went from Baptist to Apostolic. Yes, ma'am. How did you make that decision and what did your family say during that time? Um, very good question. Um, as far as me making the decision, mm -hmm. I actually didn't have anything to do with it. Okay. Sometimes I say we get pushed out by others mm. because they're trying to be on the horizon and they see something in you and there's something that's good in you. So they're pulling you along. Remember I said I was Baptist. And in Baptist church, I'm not going to say anything negative at all, but mm. for me, all we did was went to church, heard the speaker, the pastor, and went home. Wasn't getting any teaching and real understanding. Nothing against them because it was the era that they were in, the time mm -hmm. we were in. And so as I went on and I say, uh, something is not right. And I kept saying that to myself. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to this. Okay. And so when you have a hunger for God and you have learning and you want to know, what is it for me, God? Now, that's when I told you, remember I said the vision of an apostolic and fivefold ministry came from God at my mother's house when he called my name, mm -hmm. daughter, wake up. It was then that it was spoken and I was saying, but there is no apostle. And the Lord was saying, you are my daughter. And the difference between hearing God's voice and knowing the voice of what I'm thinking I'm hearing is when he chastised me, he doesn't call me daughter. Mm. But he said, daughter, you are my apostle. And three months later, the apostle came to me and said, why are you running? Mm. The apostle who had to uh, ordain me as an apostle did not know him. They had just moved down from New York. Wow. And that's when I say, wait, God, you said that. He said, yes, and I'm here to help you. God told me you were trying to run. Mm. So he said, so it was <laughs> never Mary's decision. <laughs> I would have been happy to be in the corner to help everybody else because mm. I tell you, when I was young, my head was down like this all the time. My mom would say, you ought to be rich because you hold your head down too much. Mm. But I was shy, mm -hmm. just shy, did not know. And so from that to that point, it was an easy task for me because I had help. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're trying to do things on your own and you don't have a whole lot of help from right. God's people guiding mm -hmm. you, it can cause some terrible problems in your mm -hmm. life. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't my decision. Okay. I had to agree with the decision God had made in my life. All right, all right. Another question. Uh, Five-fold ministry, mm -hmm. what is it? And well, the fivefold ministry is a very interesting question. The fivefold ministry, uh, ministry comes from, of course, Ephesians 4. When he talks about 4, 11, and 12, when God said, I have called many, but before I can even go there, I got to go back to many are called, mm -hmm. few are chosen. Mm -hmm. So by the time Paul starts talking about the fivefold ministry and how important Important it still is today where many want to say downscale and downsize mm -hmm. never because it is of God and when he was speaking to the people then in Ephesus mm -hmm. and he was saying now now I've got some that I'm going to pull into a five-fold ministry meaning I'm going to call some apostles some prophets teachers and pastors and I'm missing one but nevertheless those five he says mm -hmm. are going to go forward now what's the reason why are we going for as those offices, those mm -hmm. gifts, if you will, right? The gifts. Mm -hmm. And he says, the reason I'm pulling you up in that area is because I need some to teach, some to preach, some to oversee, which is the pastors. And I need the apostles and prophets. Prophets don't just speak a word over someone. Mm -hmm. That is a purpose for a prophetic prophet, true prophet. There's a lot of false prophets. And I had to walk in that area as well. I've been hit hard in that because the higher your position takes you, the more attack seemingly is going to come against you for what he's called you to do. Okay. But even in that, he says, the apostles are set, not just set for regions. We're set up for many things. There's been debate over chief apostles. Apostle, we understand that Jesus Christ is the chief apostle. And so what I understand is to edify Mm -hmm. That's what we're called to do, to edify the body of Christ, to minister to one another, to love one another, to teach them, 
to train them up. And not just to edify them, just to edify them, meaning I'm teaching you, I'm, like, I'm helping you to understand. But other than just edifying you, he said, there is time that I have to teach you now mm -hmm. how to come together because you're having a problem here in Ephesus. This was Paul. Mm -hmm. And he said, I got to teach you guys how to come together and become unity and unified as a body, which he is the head, of course. And he then went on to say, not just to teach you all. He said, I have to teach you is for as maturing spiritually. Mm -hmm. So there is a reason why God said, I still need my fivefold ministry to go forth stronger than ever now because mm -hmm. we're being under attack more than ever now. Yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. not all of it, though. <laughs> now, moving from, um, you started a school. Yes, ma'am. Oh, let's talk about your school. Yes, ma'am. So the school we started, my husband and I, at this time, this was in about 2010, and we're running Living Water Christ Church at that time. And the Lord spoke to my husband because we were under a different name at that time. It was a name called uh, Olive Grove. And he said to me, he said, the Lord said, change the name. I said, what did he say he changed it to? And he said, Living Water of Christ Church. I said, well, let's move. But before we move, let's sit down with the board. Let's sit down at the table and find out what is it we need to do in this vision that he has given you. Because now he's still not the pastor, but he was, he's hearing from God just as well. He's a deacon of the church. And so he was, we sat down at the table. We said, this is what we want to do. God said it. I believe it. At that time, we had about five extra acres on our home property. Mm. He says, the Lord want me to build the church over here. He said, also, I believe he wants us to have a place where we can set up for people to work, to make income for the kingdom of God. He also said, uh, I said, I want a school. He said, I see a school, a type school. And at that time, he just was saying what he heard didn't have no plans behind it. Mm -hmm. Well, the minute he said the school, the seminary, I was in the seminary at Newburgh. I was going to that church at the time, mm -hmm. too. And I was taking the classes from the Life Christian University, which is located in Florida, in Tampa, Florida. Um, and so great man of God. He had all kinds of people to come under him, graduated with theological degrees, such as uh, you see the people on TV. Uh, my mind skips me as far as calling them all out. But nevertheless, I had a friend who was working in New Birth. And she was running the school through the school from Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to her. She said, Apostle Mary, you want a school? I said, well, my husband says, she said, well, what do you say? I said, I want to support him. I want to support the vision because I'm a pastor and he's working with me. And she said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sit down at the table. We're going to take everything I know, everything we need to help you. I remember mm -hmm. earlier I said, God always has someone yeah. set aside. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Like this, for example, when your heart was ready, God started opening up the doors. I believe that he does it all for all of us if we really want to move forward and see what God is doing. Yes. So we started the school in 2010, a phenomenal decision we made together. And the school prospered for just now. We just recently shut it down this year, oh, wow. unfortunately. <laughs> But because of COVID and because mm -hmm. of our people, you know, the income wasn't coming in. And mm -hmm. uh, we, and the school we were under affiliated with was Life Christian University, which was accredited school. And because of that, they allowed anyone outside of the Florida area to come under them. But we couldn't do online because that was one of their stipulations. So okay. they shut that down. However, we could offer... Um, Oh, let's see. The, we could offer a program which was called doing it at home on your own, but it wasn't online connected to them, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You could get, you could come in, you could just sell us, you could take them home, you come back in the school, we sit down with you, we go over everything, but you didn't come into the classes. Right. So those type of programs. We had some phenomenal teachers. Dr. Mm -hmm. Dugas was one of them. Mm -hmm. Dr. Barbara Hall, Dr. Fletcher and Dr. Well, actually, she's not a doctor, but Minister Karen Jacobs. So we had some phenomenal teachers, again, sent by God. Now, how would I know? Not a cent did they take. Not one penny. They always like, what do we need to do uh -huh. to help? 
And see, we don't get that no more as much. Mm -hmm. It seems everybody wants something now in their hands. But when you're doing the kingdom work of God, you got to help one another. Mm -hmm. This is what the Ephesians 4, God told Paul, help these people. This all mean coming together at whatever mm -hmm. cost. Yeah. So it, it shut down this year. It was a hard decision, mm -hmm. but we were coming out of pocket so much because there's no income coming in from that students now. They've all lost some money, income to COVID, shut down, etc. So we made the decision, we'll close it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, if God says, open it back up, it's easy access. Okay. Great, 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 great. Have you had any disappointments? Ah, well, that was one of them, of course. But the, yes, ma'am. <laughs> disappointments or decisions about wanting to quit. I believe you said that to me on one of the questions as well you were saying. Disappointment is, um, don't want to be discouraged to no one, of course. But yes, ma'am, I have some, several disappointments. The disappointments where the church didn't flourish like it needed to over the time and over the years. Mm -hmm. Disappointment because we poured into so many others and not many stayed. But those are the things I understand goes along with ministry now, mm -hmm. territory. Uh, disappointments because of me. And I have to take my own accountability. Okay. And um, that's something I really had to come to, to face. You cause some of your own demise. Mm. Praise God. That's a sermon right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why is it that others can see in you all of this great anointing mm -hmm. and you don't see it in your own self? Mm -hmm. And so it took me some time and it took some encouraging and some people of higher spiritual levels. And I, and I have to say I had some great ones in my life mm -hmm. as we still do today. And so that, I said, I was just ready to stop, turn, quit. Because now my husband has been ordained as a pastor, and I am trying to push him to take the role that he said God called him into. Mm -hmm. And now he's a bishop. But he was so used to overseeing everything, and he was so used to taking care of the things that needed to be done that I could run the ministry. That was a charge and a challenge for me. I'm trying to push you, sir. You just do what you need to do. He mm -hmm. didn't want me to leave. Here's the other disappointing news. When God did call me, and I know that voice when he calls, he says, now it's time to go forth in your Mary J. Turner ministry. This was about six years ago. Okay. Because now you do have to take charge and take these women to that next level. Mm -hmm. Now I'm beginning to hear all this and I'm writing it down. My husband did not understand. <laughs> no fault of his own. All he could see me was leaving him at that church. And I was saying, I'm not leaving. So I stayed on and stayed on and kept running the church, doing the things I needed to do. People would come on, Pastor Mary, you need to come on out. Now you know as an apostle, you can't stay in this church forever. Disappointed to myself because I wasn't strong enough to come up against that. Okay. But praise the Lord Almighty God, we're there now. That banquet that mm -hmm. you attended, that was the breaking opening for awesome. me. Awesome. It was the one, because when I say God said, and I had no idea why he said it, now it's time to set the women's banquet up, mm -hmm. because I'm about to boost you out there now. I'm about to push you now. I'm going to show you some things that you have already missed. But one thing God told me, he said, every promise I made, it shall be fulfilled. Yes. And you don't have to hide and you don't have to be ashamed or embarrassed anymore. Uh -huh. Dr. Ficklin, I would say, Lord, if I could just get freedom from my husband, I could move forward. Mm -hmm. And I could see everybody else in my circle that had come up with me just going forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm still standing there, sitting there, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then God spoke again. This is what we're going to do. You're going to honor these women of God that's been in your life. That's helped you. So that was easy. Oh, yes, Lord. So I start planning. My planning didn't agree with God. And mm. you remember we can plan. That's right. But it's him who can change the plans yes. at any time. I spoke that at the banquet. I said, you know, when I was putting this together, I had 20 women in my heart that God showed me. But he said, I'm going to show you something else with that. It's not going to all be easy going. It's going to hurt you sometimes, but it's for your good to help you understand, to help others that's been broken 
And I consider myself a broken woman at one time. So he said to me, he says, now go forward, daughter, and put this together. And you're not going to feed them anything. You're going to give them the best. I said, dear God, must don't know my account. (laughs) I said that. He never answered. And I said, I called my godson. I said, I need music, the one that was playing the saxophone. God had gone before me already. I'm saying this to others out there so you know. When God gives you anything to do, he's gone before you already and made the decision and made the plan. He -hmm. said, Mom, what do you need? I don't care if I do have an engagement. I'll change it for you. I said, ooh, thank you, Jesus. I said, I wanted to put nice little things into there. I said, dress it up. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not going to do it like you used to do it. He's breaking me open now. He's Mm -hmm. showing me how to do the best and serve the best because I am his best. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said, yes, Lord. Everything you saw there, it was done by God. And he handled the whole affair. So I was like, praise be the Lord. And so now I say, I don't have anything to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. Today I turned 70. All right. That's a favorite number of God's. If we make it to 70. Mm -hmm. And more than that, it's going to be added. The blessings of the Lord. And so I thank you for again for just asking me to be here. Mm -hmm. I call it an honor. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. We're in the room. We're in the room. We're in the room. Oh, I thought you were on my team. Wait. So we were just talking about, um, we had finished talking about disappointments. Yes. And we were moving into, uh, I guess, how do you continue to stay motivated? And you had just closed, said you just closed the school. Yes, ma'am. Now, where has God called you to this? My <laughs> <laughs> God, that's a big question as <laughs> well. But I did want to go back to say I've had some awesome people who were under me Mm -hmm. and leadership in my church. And I want to give accolades out to them. And the prophet has gone on to start his own ministry, Fresh Mm -hmm. Wind. And and so I didn't want to leave that without acknowledging good people Mm -hmm. to come along, obedient to the word and to their leaders. So Mm -hmm. thank God for that. Where is God calling me now? I, that question was asked to me Saturday. I was sitting with my uh, another great woman of God, and we had about a four-hour time together about you know different things. And she says, "So, do you want to run the church?" And uh, she says, "So, tell me, what are you doing?" So I said, "Right now, I am the pastor at Living Water Christ Church." I have been, and I accepted the calling of the Marriage Eternal Ministries. What does that mean, she said, and I shared with her. It's going out to set up talking, speaking, revivals, uh, retreats, etc. for women. A lot of them have been for women, pushing it and encouraging them. But one thing I heard God tell me this, though, doctor. Now you are going to go call them in and send them out. Now mm-hmm. I said, Lord, I've been doing that a while. This time is a different one. Okay. We've been talking about leveling up. We've been talking about how God is shifting up in the change in the seasons now. And we better be in position to take everything he's throwing and giving to us to do. And so now I say, what do I do next, God? What do I do? And here it is. This is one of them. This is part of it. 
I even thought about doing, I don't want to do talk show because I'm too embarrassed and too shy, but God's will will be done. Mm -hmm. So he said, I told you, that bank was going to open up doors. And the first one was this one. Well, actually some others, I have to say, people were blessed. People, women were blessed. And so I think right now, Mary J. Turner ministry is very strong. It's been strong. I've been doing the works of the Lord in that position and in capacity. But now, this one is not what I believe is like church. I used to teach a lot of classes recently on uh, different things that women were searching for help in. Okay. And out of the class, and I have given certificates and everything, because it wasn't part of the seminary. Uh -huh. We heard, and all the women in this class heard the same thing. God said, I've got remnants hidden, waiting to come forth. And he told me, now go get them. Hmm. I'm sending you out to get them. Now call them in and then send them out. Now, here we are. My good friend, Apostle Jetta Robertson and her husband, Apostle Keith, have always been great, great supporters with us, co-laborers, etc. He spoke to her as well, and he has spoken mm -hmm. to me, unbeknownst to me, and we we're like about an hour away from each other. So we were talking one day, and she said, Apostle Mary, do you know that we've got to start something? And at that time, she kind of went through things as well, good. And she says, but God called me to you. I said, he did. What did he call you for? And when she said, we've got to put an organization together, but we've got to help these broken women. Mm. We've got to help these people who are out there that have gone in incarcerations. And when they come back out, where are we going to send them to get the help mm. they need? And I'm listening to the replay of this in my head now. Mm -hmm. And God said, reminding you, broken remnants hurt, but I do have some hidden still. So we came up with, what do we do? We spent from March to just, everything is new for me. <laughs> God, I thank you, everything. So you get the first hand, praise the Lord for what God wanted us to put out there. Started in March, she and I, we sit down at the table, we go to lunch, we do this legally. We got everything done the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So we call this organization now a nonprofit organization, Chosen Remnant Incorporation. All right. Again. Where's the funds coming from? Then he shows us and show out again. Mm. Just do the work. I'm going before you. It's happening right now. So we're getting ready now to go into another grand opening, a small grand opening in September. September uh -huh. 30th. Everybody will hear. You got to hear about it. You'll get uh -huh. an invitation as well. But that what we saw, and I don't want to put nobody under the uh, boat or anything like that, but my son had incidents where he had gotten in trouble, nothing bad. He's a part of this organization today, mm -hmm. which he has been such an instrument because he knows more about computers than us elders know anyway. <laughs> so okay. what God has done is brought that person in and two other with us. And now that will come to play later. Mm -hmm. But the chosen remnant, I was concerned for my husband. Was he going to agree? Because now he said, oh, you do, you do so much. You get going, going, going. I was like, Will you support me? If you say God said I can't stop it, so I praise you God, because now his heart has changed. Because mm -hmm. it was always about, are you just going to leave me again dry and high? No, never going to leave you. Never leave the church. So that part is where I believe it's going to take off. And it's not going to be churchy. It's going to be spiritual. It's going to have God first mm -hmm. and foremost, of course. But I think we can get more people help doing okay. it this way without saying come to my church, mm -hmm. come to her church. This is going to be open and offered to people in Rockdale and in Gwinnett County. Okay. And again, I say the things we do that Jesus Christ said to do, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to be pushing hard for. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Praise God. Oh, awesome. Congratulations Thank on you. what God's going to do. We'll be praying Amen. that. Amen. Oh. It's so good. So yeah, thank you. Yes, and now I'm excited. I really am about mm -hmm. this one because I know everything else I had to do, it came with some burdens. Mm -hmm. 
and not people burdens always. Okay. It came with things of feeling like sometimes you're overloaded. Mm. And, and God has always been there for you. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see him. Okay. But now I can help others. Awesome. That's the broken remnant mm. that needs to come back together. Yes. Yeah. And there are so many broken women oh, out we. here that can benefit from it. I pray. That. I pray. Yes. I yes. Pray. Yes. yes. It's not going to come to the church. No, ma'am. They're not. They're definitely not going to tell come on now. what's come going on with come, them at the church. Testimonies won't come from their mouth mm -hmm. like that in no. the church building. No. God said, I'm raising them up in the streets. Mm -hmm. I'm raising them up in the foreign places. Yes. Would you not take care of minds that's not been seen as like they wanted mm -hmm. to be seen? Right. Yes, Lord, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things, we've talked through everything. She and I. But God knows what he's doing. We just got to follow. Got to follow. Got to follow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. Okay. What's the worst thing you had to overcome? Um, accepting myself as who mm -hmm. I am okay. and who God called me to be mm -hmm. and yet still ran it and still kept doing it. Mm -hmm. But deep down inside, I didn't feel like I was worthy of it. Okay. So I think that was the biggest. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame. And, and it's, a, it's a shame that I had to wait so long to get to that place mm -hmm. where I now understand. Just do what God say do. I had a prophet, one of my good, my prophet's son, prophet Burns always said, Mom, just do what God say do. But I thought I was doing right mm -hmm. by honoring my husband, just sitting there with him. Mm -hmm. But God, mm -hmm. he says, too much more left in your daughter. Okay. And too many waiting <laughs> on your daughter. So now I know I'm free. Awesome. Free indeed. Hallelujah. Awesome. Jesus. And this is so, to me, is powerful for other women and men as well Absolutely. who are struggling, struggling. with that uh, self yes. in walking out and uh, doing what they've been exactly. called to do. Because so many times people do feel unworthy. Yes. They're not prepared. Yes. But God prepares us. That's the key. If you're not prepared and equipped, mm -hmm. And your walk where God is calling you, that will be a hindrance for you. Mm -hmm. And whomever you're under and who's covering you, we've got to do better. That's right. an error we failed in tremendously, right, right, big time. Right. And again, like I say, all the things I've seen is error. My husband been hurt so tremendously, but I won't mm -hmm. go into that by ministry, of course, not by people sometimes. Mm -hmm. But when we say we're doing all we can do, no, it's not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about what we're doing for our Heavenly Father. He mm -hmm. created this image and this person, these people, and He knows who's going to do what He wants them to do. Mm -hmm. I thank God under His grace. I didn't get caught up and get lost, and mm -hmm. He didn't give up on me. All right. You know, and I'm still here <laughs> in the name of Jesus. So I'm ready uh, like a fireball now. Okay. I am. Awesome. Love it. I love, love it. Too. it. I'm excited for what he's going to do with you in this season. Absolutely. And I want to share one more thing. Okay. You know how people say sometimes 360 and full circle? Well, God's been speaking that in my spirit over about a year now. Mm -hmm. And he kept saying, these people in your life, they're not all going to stay with you. Mm -hmm. So be okay with that. I'm sending others now to help. And then he said, but I'm going back now in full circle because there was some behind you that needs to stay with you a little longer. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, these last three months, he's been showing up like never before. Mm. I'm telling you, they're coming and it's all right now. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to be big enough to say, you know what? You may be younger. I can learn and glean from you too because mm -hmm. the Lord we serve, mm -hmm. he'll show us to others. He yeah. said, even a baby can teach someone something. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Great, yes, great, but great. I thank God that you saw great in me, and I am great, and you are great, of course, and mm -hmm. we know greater works is ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And this is called iron sharpening iron, yes, and yes. pushing one another to go on and don't give up and don't quit. Mm -hmm. I post most of my posts is do not stop, don't mm -hmm. quit, but I was talking to me too. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, our reconnection was definitely ordained. It, I, it, I see, accept see? it. That um, because the things that happen in that 24 hour period to bring this together, I was like, man, uh -huh. okay, Lord. And, and again, 
I had to get out of my own way. Yeah. To be more careful. And be like, okay, Lord. You, That's it. You, get out of the way. You, you doing it. And I'm ready. I'm not scared. I'm That's not a afraid. Blessing. Thank you. Um, I'm excited. Yes. For what and how he's going to do what he's going to do. How he's bringing women together to oh work my. together Come to on. where we're not mad at one That's another. It. We don't know how to work with one we're another. Going through that, but how can we build on what each other is doing? How can we support one another? That's it. Because we're the difference. Yes, yes, yes. And once we start recognizing that mm -hmm. I can respect mm -hmm. what you have. Amen. You Amen. You can respect what I have. And not just respect it, but what can I do to now to be help you? Yes. As a servant of mm -hmm. God, whatever that it. is, so be it. And this, you just said something powerful just mm -hmm. now. When you said you knew me 10 years ago, mm -hmm. met me, rather. Mm -hmm. And then you said it was at the banquet. Did you hear what I just said? God mm -hmm. set this up. Mm -hmm. I did not have an idea I had to set a banquet up. But mm -hmm. God knew I had to. Okay. You too. Mm. You called me the day of all that banquet and said, Apostle Mary, I was praying and asking the Lord, now who am I going to get to come to speak? That was the beginning for what you're about to do. Yes. And I declare the decree, mm. it will go forward with the most power of God mm. and the love you have for the people of God, that mm. the purpose will make a difference, not just here, mm -hmm. but across this nation yes. and in this world. I mean. Because somebody needs to hear mm. what's going on and yes. hear you speak boldly as a woman. Yeah, we get sidetracked. Yeah, we get mm. upset. Yeah, we get thrown back and talked about. But who cares anymore? Mm, right. What do you say? <laughs> we're going to walk it out now. Yes. And then we're going right. to be able to help men mm -hmm. because we're birthers. Mm. Good God Almighty, I'm going to leave mm. alone. Ah. I am in love with Being the Lord. Good up I in told here. them yesterday in service, I said, I have fallen in love again with my Heavenly Father. Mm. Now I know him as my soulmate. Now I know him because now I don't have to hear about him. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with him now. Yes. So now we know, hey, right. yeah, you can do this. Your daddy. All right. The then. father. The yes. creator. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to help everybody oh, I can. Anybody yes. who wants to go yes. forward. I want you to help women in one more thing. Those who are married or in relationships yes. that don't always have the support that they need initially, how do you continue to move in what God has called you to until the support catch up? Wow, 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 wow. You just throwing water all <laughs> over me, girl. Bless the Lord. Well, the reason, and, and I say this because if you're saved, truly saved mm -hmm. and know that you're saved and have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior to master your life, to rule over you and to lead you. That is the greatest thing you can do because that is where your true help comes from. Mm -hmm. None other than our Heavenly Father. And I don't want to be so spiritual but that's all you got to say about it. No. It also means that if you know that you're supposed to be doing these things, you're going to do it with joy inside because the peace of Jesus is going to sit inside of you and keep mm -hmm. you at peace. That's the number one, the peace that lives inside of us that makes us not understand how we keep going. That's how we keep moving it. Because if you quit every time someone lashed out at you, you never succeed. You'll always be a failure. Yeah. So how would you say that? What would you think on that? What do I think on that? Um, oh. And it's, it's funny you asked me that. Put the question back yeah, on me. Yeah, yeah. Because having been through that, having been that, um, I couldn't move in front of my husband and so get you've been there. still. Yes. See? Getting still and waiting and just really getting to a point of saying, okay, Lord. I know you gave me some gifts. Yes. I know I'm talented in certain things. Yes. I don't want to be the man. I, praise the I Lord. I want to be who you want me to Amen. be in you. In him. And being able to have an open and honest discussion 
with my husband. Absolutely. And him like, well, don't. Because one of what my husband, I'm like, I'm on my second husband as That's well. Good. But one of the things when we got together that we promised one another, at no time will we get in the way if we believe God has told you to do something. Mm, good God Almighty. That's a blessing right Just, there. If you believe that's what God has called you to go do, go do it. Go do it. <laughs> and I've seen and, my husband change tremendously in that area mm-hmm. as well recently. And yeah. uh, he said yesterday, if God said do it, do it. Do it. Thank you, Jesus. And when the, when they are at that point and they're doing what God has called them to do, yes. it's easy. Yeah. The other greatest thing that we as women can do in our homes with our husbands and their families and children is support them, encourage them. And the things my husband does, Dr. Ficklin, I mm-hmm. couldn't touch it. I know my lane. Mm-hmm. He has his own thing, and I can only do what God called me to do. Right. So, yeah. Right. And if it's, it, it, like I tell them all the time, if, if you're tired, mm-hmm. I understand. We're eight, but we can't keep saying I'm tired. Right. We better start saying I'm blessed right. and highly favored. Mm. Awesome. We are coming to the end of our time, but I want you to leave the people with something that's on your heart. Praise the Lord. Leave the people with something on my heart. Mm-hmm. Father God. There's so much in my heart right now that I just wanted to pour out at the same time. I I want people to understand that the journey you are in right now, or on, it's a good journey. Because it may not manifest the way you want it to. Maybe it hasn't gone down the road you thought it should go down. Trust the Lord God that we are serving on today. And know that he's making a way out of no way. And know that he said these times are limited. So be careful and make sure that you're on track with God. Make sure that you're in tune with God. Make sure that you're moving in the direction he wants you to move in. And you don't have to wait until you get older. This word can apply to anyone who has an ear to hear and eyes to see. Because God is doing strange and phenomenal stuff right now. We're in the present time that we can't even afford to slow up. Mm-hmm. Got to keep moving. You got to keep pressing in. Because somewhere out there, somebody is waiting on you to make that move. So I challenge you today to get up like I've gotten up. Because I am one you're looking at that sit down by the sideline and watch others go. But God never gave up on me. Mm-hmm. God never said you were not my child. The Lord, I can tell you today that he's giving you more grace than you've ever had. Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now that your anointing just got increased. Mm-hmm because of a word that fell to your ears and you weren't even expecting it to. So get up, get ready, because you're about to move Mm -hmm. forward now. Women of all, get up. We're not just women birthing babies, but we are women of God in the spiritual realm. We're working and we're working to move forward the gifts inside of each other. And I love what my friend said just just now. Dr. Ficklin said something powerful right now. We have got to learn how to work with each other. We've got to stop fighting and picking on each other. And that person doesn't look like me. That person doesn't fit in my group. That person, this and that person is not a God. So once we get that clear, that pathway will open up. Those doors will open up. Trust me, I'm the witness to it. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk with Patricia. And we'll see you the next time. Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make.